Hi everyone and welcome to a video about chocks. Now when you have a vehicle which is static and you're winching another vehicle you don't want the winching vehicle not to move uh, yet often it does because the forces are so great and the traction is so low so how do you stop that happening? Obviously you can anchor that vehicle to a tree or something similar I'll show you how to do that but you can also chock it and you can chock it with something like this um, an actual chock or maybe just a stick or a stone. We're going to be measuring in this video um, the forces involved and to see how effective each one of those systems is. Now bearing in mind that a chock is normally used to stop a, a wheel which could roll from rolling, what we're doing here we're actually going to lock the brakes on the vehicle um, so the wheel can't roll and then see how effective those chock systems are by measuring the forces. So this is our setup for the chock test. It's fairly hard ground, but um, it is actually earth and it is a bit gravelly. So the vehicle will slide on that a little bit, uh, maybe dig in a bit as well. We're winching against a tree, so you know the vehicle is definitely not going to pull the tree out of the ground, so um, that, that bit's taken care of. And this is also going to be a locked brake test, so the vehicle's brake is going to be fully locked as opposed to just trying to roll over the uh, chock, and that's to simulate what you'd actually do when winching in reality. And here at the end is the load cell and that's going to be used to measure the forces once every second logging to a file which will analyse in Excel. Okay, what we're going to do now is try just two plain rocks like this and see what effect they have as chocks.
Okay, so let's look at the results then. So here we've got a graph on the vertical axis that's force in kilograms and the vehicle weight's about 2650 kilograms and on the horizontal axis that's time, although that's not overly important um, for the results. So the first one we've got here is the flat pull. So this is just where the vehicle had no chocks at all, just being dragged along the ground. And you can see there's a slight rise over time as the vehicle's wheels dug in. Then we've got the stones and pretty similar there um, but even more of a slight rise looking at the video there i think that's again the stone sort of to dig in a bit and um, uh, that's why we see that again that rise as uh, over time as the wheels sort of sink into the ground and the chocks very similar again there so slightly different results but within margin of error for all three of them because it's really hard just to get exactly repeatable results time and time again so what that says is that there's really very little difference between pulling on the flat um, or chocking with with stones or actual chocks but if we look at the holes look at that we've got significantly more um, a force required then um, up to about sort of 23 50 kilograms there which is which is a lot more but interestingly if we look at the first three the trend line is actually up and that's because as time goes on the vehicle's wheels start to dig into the ground whereas if we look at the trend line for the holes then it goes down the reason for that is is that um, as I kept pulling I pulled the vehicle out of its hole and therefore resistance um, was reduced back down to the point um, as if it was um, pretty much on, on the flat there. So there's an interesting thing there. So holes definitely seem to be most effective. On average, the sort of um, flat stones chocks was about 1,800 kilograms. The uh, holes went up to 2,300, but that only works as the wheels are actually in the holes there. And the difference was around half a ton or about 30%. So the conclusion is, if you want to chock your vehicle, then you definitely want to use holes, but remember to fill them in afterwards. So here's an example of where we can use a double line pull and a split anchor. So the white car is on a hill, it's stuck, the orange car is going to winch it and we've got an anchor point there. So I'll run a winch line out, put it around the snatch block and double it back to the anchor point and then from the snatch block we just run a line out to the stuck car. Now let's say that we've got a thousand kilogram force required to move the stuck car. What we can do with the snatch block then is split that to 500 and 500 which has the advantage of not only halving the load on the winch but also so halving the load dragging the winch car down the hill so you've got mechanical advantage and halving your anchor load So here's another way to do that. So again, we've got the uh, stuck vehicle, the white car needing a thousand kilogram pull, and we've got the orange car going to winch it. So we'll just, this time the orange car is facing uphill. We'll just run up to the anchor point, put a snatch block and bring it back down. Now, in this case, we've got no mechanical advantage because we've got 1,000 kilograms required to shift the white car. That's a thousand kilograms also on the orange car to pull it. But because of the fact we're just doing a redirect with no mechanical advantage, there's double that or 2,000 kilograms on the anchor point. Now if you want to know more about why that works check out my other winch and physics uh, videos which you can find on my winching and recovery playlist. So in summary then chocks like these can be effective if the wheel is just going to freely roll but if the roll wheel is just going to be locked then they're not very effective and really the most effective way to immobilize a vehicle is going to be to actually dig a hole for um, the wheels but do remember if you do that to fill the hole in afterwards. Now there's a fair bit more testing to be done here for example of all four wheels more different types of chocks tire pressures etc and I will do that at some point if you have any questions or comments um, please subscribe subscribe to the channel, leave them in, in the comment section and let me know what you'd like to see. And thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the comment section.